would be renamed the of Congressional Complaint Review, according to a summary of the amendment released by Goodlatte's office. And Dick Clark Productions responds to Mariah Carey, quote, sabotage claim. TMZ reported 11.36 a.m. Pacific Time. Dick Clark Production sources tell TMZ Mariah's sabotage claim is, quote, silly. I definitely agree. Seeing how she's the one who decided not to do a sound check and had a stand-in do it instead. They also say there were eight monitors on stage amplifying sound, so even without an inner ear, Mariah should have been able to hear just fine. They add Mariah changed her story, initially saying the track was wrong. Our Dick Clark sources insist her camp provided the track list. Hmm. Well, it seems that Mariah Carey has just made a complete fool out of herself twice in a row. First, by blaming someone else with her entitlement issues, but at, um, actually that would be um, the second time. Her first time was is when she uh, couldn't remember what the words were to sing in the songs that she's actually sung before. <laughs> And I think those two songs, or I think it was two songs, that she actually, uh, those were her songs. I'm not sure on that, but I believe so. They were actually her songs. How do you forget songs that you actually made famous by those songs? You know, I, how do you do that? Must have been some strong drugs. Then on top of that, she had these men, like she always does, you know, super tight clothes. She's a little bit overweight, super tight clothes, and uh, showing, practically trying to show herself naked, you know, the way she's got her thing on. Then on top of that, portraying that of an angel. Are you serious? Breaking leaked audio of John Kerry just exposed the truth about Obama and ISIS. A leaked audio recording of John Kerry has exposed Barack Obama's plan to allow ISIS to grow in order to force the hand of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Wow, this is looking good for January 20th when Donald gets sworn in. Truthfeed.com reported this evidence within this single story would, should, forever remove any credibility toward the U.S. foreign policy under President Obama. It also destroys the credibility of a large number of well-known Republicans. What the recording reveals is substantive. First only regime change, the removal of Bashar Assad in Syria was the goal for President Obama. Oh yeah, we've known that. This is admitted and outlined by Secretary John Kerry. Secondly, in order to accomplish this primary goal, the White House was willing to watch the rise of ISIS by placing their bet that ISIS success would force Syrian B President Bashar Assad to acquiesce toward Obama's terms and step down. Thirdly, in order to facilitate the two objectives, Obama and Kerry intentionally gave arms to ISIS. What have we been saying all along? Arguably, attacked a Syrian government military convoy to stop a strategic attack upon the Islamic extremists, killing 80 Syrian soldiers. Pause for a moment and consider those three points carefully before continuing, because this audio below, along with accompanying research now surfacing, not only exposes that th those three points as truth, but also provides the specific evidence toward them. But not only that, it shows clear evidence that Obama is guilty of treason. He is, without a doubt, a major terrorist, a political terrorist, feeding arms to ISIS. The problem in the Obama carries secret strategy became clear when ISIS grew in sufficient strength to give the White House optimism for the scheme. However, instead of capitulation, Assad then turned to Russia for help. When Russia came to aid Bashar Assad, the Syrian government began being able to defeat ISIS and Islamic extremist elements within Syria for the hidden plan of Obama slash Kerry and also McCain, Graham, ET. Russia defeating ISIS, Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusra upended their objective. 
The revelations within this leaked audio are simply astounding. Remember uh, Julian Assange says, says, if you thought 2016 WikiLeaks was going to be good, you have seen nothing yet. You haven't seen anything. Could this be from WikiLeaks? One of the bombshells? The 40-minute discussion took place on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. The meeting took place at the Dutch mission to the United Nations on September 22, 2016. Carrie's off-record conversation was apparently with two dozen Syrian civilians, all from U.S.-backed opposition-linked NGOs in education and medical groups supposedly working in rebel-held, a.k.a. terrorist-held areas in Syria. This opposition conclave also included rescue workers, which can only be ambassadors from the White Helmets, a pseudo-NGO which serves as Washington and London's primary PR front in pursuit of a, quote, no-fly zone in Syria, and it's being bankrolled by the U.S., U.K., EU, EU and other coalition states to the tune of well over $100 million so far. Listen to the audio. Key carry moments at 0200 and again approximately at 1830 forward. The discussion from 1830 through 29 are exceptionally revealing and should be listened to by anyone who has wondered what was going on in Syria. Kerry even makes mention of the responsibility to protect or R2P principle. Wow. 36 minutes long. I don't know how to act as a diplomat. I for doing that. I All right, the two minutes. Now have to wear one one. This started. We lost Gary. Um, on the. we will come back to reality and say hi. Okay, then who's gonna enforce it? That's right. Look, I, I get it. Um, a lot of us wish there was an enforcement mechanism right now. A lot of us have been fighting for one, um, but we don't have one right now in that sense, so we're trying to pursue the diplomacy, and I understand it's frustrating. You have nobody more frustrated than we are. Michael's frustrated, I'm frustrated, Don's frustrated. It's, uh, you know, it's hard. Um, the problem is that, you know, you get, enfor quote, enforcers in there. Um, and then everybody ups the ante, right? Russia puts in more, Iran puts in more, Hezbollah is there more, and Nusra is more, and Saudi Arabia and Turkey put all their surrogate money in, and you all are destroyed. I mean, this is, this is a problem, uh, is figuring out how do you get people to a place of being rational. Um, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, you know, it's, we can always throw a lot of weapons in, but I don't think they're going to be good for you. And, uh, you know, people who are determined just to fight, fight, fight can destroy things completely, right? So we're trying, we're trying to find a balance here to see if we can get to a negotiated process with an end of violence while we do it. That's why we're fighting so hard for the cessation, so that you're not living day to day with fighting around you, but there's a political process that supplants the fighting. Nusra makes it hard. Um, Nusra and Daesh both make it hard because you have this extreme element out there. And unfortunately, some of the opposition has already kind of you know, chosen to work with them. Anyway, but let me listen to the rest of you before we gonna hear what else. Hmm. It is quite hard to hear. So let's try 1830. Invited in. Russia is invited strategy. That's been engaged. We do not understand how it, it can be expected from the Russians to change as, and to behave differently and to come up to a strategy that has common objectives with the with with the, with the Syrians and with, with the international community to abide with the UNSC. Well, the problem is the Russians don't care about international law, and we do. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't have a 
basis, our lawyers tell us, unless we have a UN Security Council resolution, which the Russians can veto, or the Chinese, or unless we are under attack from the folks there, or unless we are invited in. Russia is invited in by the legitimate regime, well, it's illegitimate normally, but by the regime. And so they were invited in, and we're not invited in. We're flying in airspace there where they can turn on the air defense, and we have a very different scene. The only reason they're letting us fly is because we're going after ISIL. If we were going after ISIL, those air defenses, we have to take out all the air defenses. Uh, and we don't have a legal justification, frankly, for doing that, unless we stretch it way beyond the law on a humanitarian basis, which some people argue we should, by the way. Uh, but so far, American legal theory has not bought into the so-called right to protect. Uh, and we don't even have what we had in Kosovo, where we had a you know existing resolution and so forth. Uh, even though we went alone. Uh, so it's complicated. It's, uh, it's not, not easy. And we've been fighting. How many wars have we been fighting? We've been fighting in Afghanistan. We've been fighting in Iraq. We've been fighting, you know, in the region for 14 years. And a lot of Americans don't believe that we should be fighting and sending young Americans over to die in another country. That's the problem. Uh, Congress won't vote to do it. And you can be mad at us, but what we're trying to do is help Syrians to fight for their own country. And we've been spending a lot of money, a lot of effort to try to help do this. So there's an opposition there. The opposition is doing very well. And Russia came in, and that's a problem, I know, because, you know, we, uh, uh, we don't behave like Russia. It's just a different standard. So we're trying to see whether we can put to test whether Russia is serious about a political solution. And if they're not serious, then we will help the opposition more. But I don't think you're going to, you know, I don't think that's particularly good for the citizens of Syria in the end because it means more fighting. Something about the political, uh, political uh, uh, point that uh, now the, the world always focuses on the extremist Sunni groups fighting in Syria. And in the end of the when the agreement spoke about having a credible and non sectarian uh, governance in Syria, that was difficult to. Uh, uh, sell to, to the communities on the ground and to our fellows and to our activists because it speaks only about the extremist Sunnis and ignores the extremist Shia fighters who are coming from Iran, from Hezbollah and Lebanon, from Iraq and the other areas. Well, they're a terrorist organization. We, we've designated them a terrorist organization. Yeah, but according to the Russian, uh, Russian and American agreement, the airstrikes in Syria would be only against the Sunni, the extremist Sunnis. Yeah, because the, and the reason for that is that they have both basically declared war on us and are plotting against us. And Hezbollah is not plotting against us. Hezbollah is exclusively focused on Israel, whom they're not attacking now, and on Syria, where they are attacking in support of the uh, uh, it's so it's a, uh, you know, not against us, but Russia is and plotting against us. You can see what John Kerry is trying to paint. And, he, and then he says Hezbollah is only interested in Israel and not against us. So you see who he's for Hezbollah terrorists. Your position as representing the American interests because these Shia groups they do not attack the United States, of course. But how to uh, make the majority of the Syrian people accept this approach? 
I'm sorry, what the, how to 